of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We speak your comments to my last. All right, I'd like to kick it off. Okay. Something happened this last week that I'm appalled that. I know that we've been here every week and we've been belittled and bullied and slandered and, you know, attempted to intimidate. But what took place in the newspapers last week was deplorable. We talked about, my understanding is, nepotism. There is not nepotism here. She run for office. We're talking about Amanda, our treasurer. She ran for office, won the primary, and it was only after that that we appointed her to that position. It wasn't before. Now, just to hear this, your theory on out, if you had your relative working for state DOT, you couldn't run for state office. City council, same way. If you had a relative there, you couldn't run for office. I'm just wanting to tell you, I'm really, really upset about that whole damn thing. It was unfair. It's never been done. That's it. I, I agree with Larry 100%. No, I thought that was really what I wanted. I guess my question is where? I don't know what they have here in the table. Was well, a letter to the editor or something or what? Yes, it was a letter to the editor or the entire little paper. I don't your opinion, but not your facts. I have fact is it was not nepotism. It isn't and wasn't and still is now. Well, a letter to the editor is their own opinion, that one person, whoever. I don't know. I haven't seen We it. don't know anything about it. No, we have no idea what you guys are talking about. Let me yeah. go home and look well, at it. It's out in the top end. I get it from now to the table paper. It's in Who wrote it? You want to explain what was in there? Well, Jeff wrote uh, one article. And I think. Uh, yeah, that's Devin Shide. Devin Shide wrote an article. Yes, my feeling would be if you're going to appoint somebody temporarily until the election, you would have picked somebody from the office who already had experience. Nobody wanted it. We tried. Not only that, but she was the only candidate that went through the primary. So, but did you, not, didn't you appoint her before the primary? Right. No. We absolutely did not. Wouldn't do that. Remember when Mike Richardson retired? He had two candidates running for his seat. We appointed a retired deputy from Geyser rather than some one of those two candidates. If there had been two made through that primary, we'd have never done it. Again, I'm really upset. All right. Uh, good morning. I'm Laura Wilson of Dyser, a fifth generation member of our family's farming operation here in Cooper. I'm speaking today on behalf of Tama County Against Turbines. Today is Halloween, and it's the perfect time to talk about the impact that industrial wind turbines have on flying creatures like raptors, bats, and other living things that fly day or night. Raptors have existed for some 50 to 75 million years. They've existed far longer than industrial wind turbines. If you're not familiar with raptors, they are birds of prey with a hooked beak, keen eyesight, and sharp feet that generally eat meat. Bald eagles, red-tailed red hawks, turkey vultures, and owls are among the kinds of raptors we typically see in Tama County. But if the county proceeds with allowing more commercial wind turbines to be built in Tama County under the current minimal outdated ordinances, raptors, other types of birds, and bats could all see reduced populations. It's especially true if industrial wind turbines are not safely situated far away from raptor nesting areas and flight paths of birds, bats, and other wildlife habitats. <coughs> That's because industrial wind turbines can cause devastating death loss for raptors, other birds, and bats 
who get caught up in the tremendous vortex created by wind turbines whirling at about 200 miles an hour. If raptors and other birds fly into a wind turbine, they are often unable to fly out of the tremendous wake created by the massive turbine blades. Wind project operators may attempt to minimize the effect wind turbines have on wildlife populations, but take the environmental studies bought and paid for by wind turbine project developers with a grain of salt. They are far from unbiased independent studies. Also consider the fact that some wind turbine developers have been cited for destroying bald eagle nests or other wildlife habitats to allow industrial wind projects to bulldoze land. In other cases, those companies hired by wind developers to conduct environmental studies simply move the location of a turbine or a project slightly, still causing a potential disruption for area wildlife. Now, if you or I killed a bald eagle, we would be charged with a felony, punishable by a maximum of two years in prison and a $250,000 fine, or six months imprisonment and a $5,000 fine for a misdemeanor conviction under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. But industrial wind project operators are permitted to take or kill a certain number of raptors and other wildlife each year. That doesn't seem fair or right that individuals could be charged with federal crimes for killing bald eagles and other raptors, but yet big developers operating wind projects get off the hook. That's why we need tougher ordinances in Tama County to protect our precious wildlife from death by wind turbines. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates that anywhere from 140,000 to 500,000 birds are killed each year in the USA by wind turbines. With the number of wind turbines growing across rural areas and taller turbines operating at faster speeds, the death loss to birds and bats continues to accelerate. If you're wondering why it's important to think about saving the lives of raptors, other birds, and mammals like bats, may I remind you that it's important to maintain a balanced ecosystem. Small bats can catch up to 1,000 insects an hour and a nursing mother bat eats the most, at up to 4,000 insects a night. Bats eat mosquitoes, moths, and beetles that can be harmful to crops of all kinds. Without bats, farmers would face severe crop loss that may be difficult to attempt to battle with costly insecticides. For example, bats eat the corn earworm moth and the cucumber beetle that can devour crops. If the bat population is reduced, it can greatly impact crops and our quality of life, which can become overrun with insects that carry disease, like mosquitoes carrying the West Nile virus. Commercial wind turbines can be especially deadly for bats. Bat fatalities have been documented at wind turbines throughout Iowa, across the United States, and around the world. And some species of bat, like the Indiana bat that we have here in Tama County, are already on the endangered species list. It's not uncommon for landowners to find the carcasses of dead raptors, other birds, and bats frequently in their fields around wind turbines. In fact, some wind turbine contracts require landowners to remove the dead bird, bat, and animal carcasses around wind turbines on their property every day. To anyone watching online, please remember to read potential contracts very carefully, consult with your own personal attorney before you sign anything, and call for Tama County Zoning Board to update the outdated commercial wind energy ordinance to better protect raptors, other birds, and bats to help maintain balance in our ecosystem. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I got a comment. Larry, you used the terms, uh, you guys are being bullied and slandered and some other stuff like that. Uh, Are you denying that? Yeah, a little bit. Well, not necessarily tonight, but I'd say it's probably from both sides of the table because you've cited several times the reason you guys won't represent all of us is because you guys were threatened with a lawsuit. We're not threatening you with 30 million to whatever, how many million dollars, they change all the time, lawsuits. If it ends up in one, you're gonna pay it. That's fine. Okay, I hope you guys keep talking. We'll get it. But had you not, authorized it to begin with, you wouldn't be in this spot. That's the way it works, isn't it? And 
Good morning. <laughs> it's kind of full and hot in here. Woo! Yeah. He likes to keep it hot. Don't you? No. Why do you have a Well, then why is it 80 degrees in here? Well, I don't mind sitting up front. Just so you know, I sit up there a lot. Let's see. Brian's still the chair and moved to the other side. Good morning. Any other comments? Well, you know, you, uh, last week you said you put me on the agenda for this week, remember? Okay. So, uh, I'm Jim Smith. I am a first generation farmer and lifelong resident of Pima County. Last week I acquired the nickname Walking Eagle. Right there? Yeah, correct. Uh, and in Indian terms, the translation is too full of crap to fly. Now, it didn't bother me. Some people did take offense to it. And uh, let's see, what am I trying to, what's the right way to put You this? might say pissed off. Yeah, yeah, some people were pissed off. Really? Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't sure what the what you use for wording, like crap, you know, versus something else. So I looked it up on the website, and it's on the website if anybody wants to see it. It's under Tama County Against Wind Turbine website. And uh, so, yeah, I just double checked that just to make sure. But it's there if you want to look at it yourself. Yeah. Uh, that name has been given to a lot of folks, including your dad. I, I, I'm aware of that. <laughs> That's why I kind of took it lightly. But maybe, maybe it shouldn't be told during a public meeting. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, we've been told a lot of things during yeah. you're, already, you're already taking us to your public meetings, Jim. Okay. And then uh, I think it was last week, I think you were talking about the jail jail budget of the museum, jail budget museum. But, yeah. And uh, you made the statement sometimes you gotta make a guess and hope for the best. And I think you kinda indicated that with Cody here today. Hey. I don't know. I know I've said before lots and lots of times that a budget is only past history and best guess. I don't know if that's what you're Something similar to that, I guess. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and that's a actually a true but definition. Part of the reason we've been here for the last six months is we we're trying to educate you guys and ourselves. We've learned a lot about wind turbines and solar fields. And we want to make sure that when you make your decisions, they're educated decisions. And uh, you know, like the the wind field over at Gladbrook. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the state laws changed, or maybe you weren't aware of the state laws. But the the income hasn't uh, materialized quite the way it was planned. Is the way I think I should say it. I don't know. Uh, there's a wind turbine field right now out west, and I'm, I don't know if it's in Colorado or not, but it's out west, and it's 20 years old, and it's, uh, it's obsolete because of our technology changes. It's only 20 years old, it's obsolete. I don't know what the ordinances were for the county or the state, but uh, uh, they're trying to decide who is going to be responsible for the the uh, tearing it down, the dismantling. Uh, is the wind turbine company still in existence? I don't know. Does is the county going to have to pay for it? Is the state going to pay for it? Is the farmer responsible since it's on his land? These are things that they're working out right now. Uh, there's a wind turbine field in northwest Missouri. And uh, this is Halloween, isn't it? Yeah, and there's uh, you know, there's a lot of bats around. And I'm I'm thinking we might be in the presence of one right now. I can feel it somewhere. I, I don't know. Where, I don't know where. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
But in my point is, in, in Missouri, there's a lot of caves, there's a lot of bats, and we have bats in Iowa, and I put up bat, bat houses, and we have them all flying all around. We've got two ponds where I live, and there are no mosquitoes, no mosquitoes. I believe they eat that many mosquitoes in one night. But, uh, uh, okay, so they built this wind turbine field down in Missouri, and uh, the DNR do studies, and the bat population has decreased by 30%. So what they did to solve this problem was they mandated that the wind turbine company had to stop the wind turbines at night, you know, at dusk, through the night when bats feed. Well, there you have a loss of income also, you know, in that example. So, I don't know, you know, the income doesn't always add up to what you think it is going to be. So, we are here to educate you supervisors and the Zoning Commission to upgrade our ordinances and the public and to help make good decisions, not just hoping for the best. That's all I got. Yes, I want to um, <clears throat> elaborate just a little bit on maybe personal feelings going into letters to the editor, which are personal feelings. But the problem is, <clears throat> two very key people <clears throat> in this town have lied to my face as close as what Tammy is right now and told me they knew nothing about these turbines about four months ago. Now, I've been out and about in public just about every day. And um, you know, you guys, at least part of you, knew this whole project was coming in years ago. Then the COVID was used, so there were no public meetings, so we knew what was going on. So the whole doggone phase one is already set up, permitted, ready to go. Six plus million dollars per turbine is what we're hearing, which that's astronomical. Um, I don't know, if I were this company and any other Chinese company, I would just get the signatures and own the land for the next 50 years. I don't even bother to put solar and turbines on it. I would just have control of the land. That's the farmer mentality. You know, no farm contract is ever five years, but that's what I would do if I were those fellows. So there's a lot of distrust. Guys, we have been lied to, misled, I've been lied to to my face. We've been misled in this office week after week after week. You guys tell us no comment. You pretend you don't know what's going on. Yeah, Jim's right. We're educating ourselves, the public, you guys. I don't know why there's not a full-blown article in front of the paper letting the Toledo residents know that there are turbines that could be just a half a mile out of town. How many? Well, God only knows because they don't tell you how many, where, when, if, how long they'll last, maybe two years, maybe 10 years. So there is a lot of distrust, you guys. There's a lot, and it's it's building up some um, hard feelings. Yeah, so, and I don't know how we're ever gonna get past that, it's kind of like trying to get past no water, you know? It's just, I will never trust those two men again in my life because they lied to me to my face. It's one thing to do it on paper or maybe behind your back, or maybe to Joe blow down the street a little bit, but when they do it to your face, Really, and those are really key fellows. They, anyway, now I have, when I'm out and about, I've been asked why the Indians don't have to pay any property taxes. Now, I think you can answer that question, and, and I promised them I would ask it, I promised them I would take the answer back to them. So, why is that that they have all that hundreds of thousands of acres? Because the, the agreement, the treaty, if you will, when they purchased this land was that they owned it, and then later on. I don't know if it was a statute that was already in law, but it could be taken into the tribal trust. And it goes to the Bureau of Indian Affairs is where they apply for it. Typically it's a two year period from the time of purchase to the time it's taken into the trust. Once it's taken into the trust, then it's no longer eligible for um, taxation. And, and that's not the only tax. I mean, sales tax as well. And that's like a forever. Or it's, yeah. And, and, and gas tax, they can get rebated. Okay. I mean, Thanks, that's the game. It's, they're playing. Hey, if you had that opportunity, you'd probably do it too. 
I just told you what I do with this opportunity of 50 year lease, but just own it, <laughs> control it. Tell the owner of the land what he can really do with his land and I'll just do what I want to do with it. But in regard to the not turning out the way that Jim alluded to, the taxation didn't turn out the way it was intended, that's absolutely right. Because the time, the time we bonded and we took in the first, we scheduled to take in the first payment on taxes, the legislature made a change and delayed it a year. That's maybe what you're- What they delay? Delayed their- uh, Oh, delayed their a year? Delayed. Yeah. Delayed. Delayed your obligation delayed. a year. Yeah. <laughs> so all future purchases that they make fall into this Indian Trust? Uh, well, not automatic. We bought every one of them, but never prevailed. Who really owns the land then? The whole tribe? Uh, the council? The federal government? Who? Well, I think the tribe owns it. Mm -hmm. And all it's held in trust for them. So they got full use of it. I don't know if you would ask for a deed, what you would say on the bottom of the deed. I don't know. Thank you. That's interesting. Never thought right that now, Right now they got 7,300 acres. Really? Dan? Statement, Richard. I know last week this group talked to you about fire suppression on uh, William Towers. I actually had a huge cornstalk grass fire within two miles of my place. And thankfully, five fire departments, <coughs> at least 10 people, 10 farmers with this got it stopped. The angle it was at was headed right towards my place. And I'll guarantee you after hearing that fire on that wind tower down by, uh, where was it? Williamsburg. Williamsburg. Yeah, that scares me. Because the way the wind was blowing that day, that that fire was, has, it got stopped a little over a mile away from my place. And you guys need to take that into con consideration as far as having fire suppression on these wind towers. Did they determine what started that fire? The one by me? No, the, the turbine one or the, the turbine? The one, the one that up by your place. Right? It's my understanding a young person was riding a motorbike and just riding around his farmstead, but then he plowed out in the cornfield and his hot muffler got the cornfield going. That's my understanding. So, but. <clears throat> When you stand on your place and see a fire coming at it, I'll guarantee you there's nothing will make you want to fight to make sure that anything concerning wind tower, there has to be fire suppression. Because the thought of having a huge fire just take your whole place, simply because the fire departments can't fight these wind tower fires. All they can do is put the fires out at that cost. So I just want to make that comment because I never want to see a fire that close to my place ever again. So thank you. Uh, any other comments? Yeah, that uh, about fire, that one down at Williamsburg, I think that was like 12.30 a.m that turbine caught on fire. It was on the news. And it was just a ball of flame, you know, like 500 foot up in the air, I suppose. And there's, you know, like 600 gallons or 600 more or more gallons of, I think, transmission fluid or is it transmission fluid? You know, to run the- or hydraulic. Or hydraulic fluid, yeah. One of the two that are up there on top and, uh, and the fire department can't go close to that because if that thing, well, the one, the one video I saw, the fire was so hot up on the top of the turbine, it melted the vessel that was containing the oil or hydraulic fluid and the oil was on fire and the, all the oil fluid went down to the base and the base, so the base was on fire and it melted the steel so you can't get anywhere close to those things. Like, you know, the fire department. And here in Williamsburg, that was a cornfield, and it caught on fire. And thank God the corn was harvested. 
Now, if it wasn't harvested, who would have paid? Does insurance cover that? No. No. You know, who would have paid for the damages? Or would the farmer just have to absorb that? I don't know. What is, what what be your opinion? Would it be up to the farmer just to absorb it's, it? It's my understanding. Or the neighbors up there uh, around that fire check with their insurance company. The insurance company will not pay for damages because of a fire caused by that. Okay. Mm. My grandson rides four wheeler around all the time. Ah, yeah. ah, I'm see our feet. I think part of the problem is that all this is so new. It's just we never we as in not just us. The state of Iowa hasn't had time to prepare for any of this, including the insurance companies. So when our ordinances were written in 1998, there weren't solar farms and um, big turbine farms, and so. The insurance companies are behind, everybody is behind in trying to figure out what to do with this mess. The, the, the industrial companies are gonna move on. They're not gonna be here to take down that Williamsburg mess or our messes that we're gonna have. It's, it's really frightening. Is and it still up? I wonder if that turbine's still up in the air. I imagine it is, it hasn't been is, very long. We, you can see it from the interstate. I can't believe how many people have asked me what we're gonna eat and drink if we're gonna put everything into turbines and solar farms. It isn't just this group of people that ask that. It's the common thinking, pondering person out there in the public wants to know, what are we gonna have left to eat and drink? If we're gonna put everything in solar farms, which heat everything up, or turbines, which, oh, yeah, anyway. Just to correct the record. Yes. Our ordinance, the one currently, I know it was, was just not updated. in 1998. It was 2010 and it presented as an addendum for with with improvements and additions and corrections there if you read the 1998 ordinance there are no significant changes between the 1998 overall ordinance and the 2010 addendum the 2010 was attached to the 98 that's my point did it address solar farms and turbine farms not 98 and then we added the solar later though Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I may have thought that Karen had on food and fiber. This whole event of wind turbines and solar farms, as I understand, was put in place because of carbon. Is that correct? To me, yes, well. There's there's more carbon in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide. Oh. Isn't that the reason that we have all these? I guess that's right, Chris Dan. Yeah. And, and, and it's so foolish that. to think that <clears throat> because there's been some data studied on the Antarctic solar, I mean, Antarctic ice cap. They've done some digging, corings, and they determined that there's been more carbon in the atmosphere many years ago than there is now. In fact, in one time during the, the, our existence, uh, the carbon got so low that they were worried about plant life. Okay, plants live on carbon dioxide. They produce oxygen for us. If it gets below 150 some parts per million, plant life ceases. We cease to be. What is the point in all of this? You know, it's, it's disturbing that a few people are making all the money off of these turbines and solar farms at the expense of the rest of us. I mean, it's, it's insane that we're Politics is playing us on this. Money is. That's all I have to say. It's just frustrating. Thank you all for your comments. It's 9.30. Let's call the meeting to order. Is there a motion to approve last week's minutes? So moved. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, Lyle is in uh, about 8.30. And we'd like to award the contract for the K Avenue Bridge in Columbia Township. You know, last week we gave it related to this week. Yeah. Bridge replacement on K Avenue in Columbia 35. That's the one, I believe. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, folks. Okay. 
two to three years. He, so is that the right one? Yeah, this is the right one. <coughs> I thought he was talking this morning about a different bird. He was talking, MCI. He was talking about other bridge, but yeah, he was talking about the other bridge. He was all yeah. talking yeah. about yeah. the yeah. This is the bridge yeah. that we put on. Yep, on Kate yeah. Avenue and Columbia 35. All right, that's right. Yeah. It's contract number 86-CO86-099. And I think I was, I think he said Peterson. He's yeah. Yeah, PCI. 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 Yeah, PCI. Yeah, PCI. Yeah, yeah. The way that got it. Okay. So I moved, if you're looking for motion, I am. I moved to approve the low, uh, current low bidder on that. So it is $685,341.17. All right, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. The next uh, contractor needs to fill out the contract documents and then I will sign on. Let's move down to the claims. Is there a motion to approve the claims? Uh, I'll move to approve the claims. <coughs> Thank you. Second. All in favor, favor of the claims, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. How you been? Pretty good. How are you? Uh, any better, it'd be scary. <laughs> That's a good thing. It is a good thing. Bill's trying to help me out. <laughs> and speaking of good things. <laughs> right. <laughs> how about approving the liquor license for the Pilgrim Heights Thirsty Pig LLC? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, they, they did thirsty pig, so I need to approve it. All this, they've got all this, all their uh, legals done, right, Laura? Yes, they do, and they've got all their dram shop and everything. Okay. So all right. got it. Yeah. It's a little different because it isn't a temporary, it's a occasional it's, for years. Yes, right? yes, like it's for wedding events, and I think this weekend they actually had an arts festival going on. Yeah, there. I think occasional is the right word. Yes, yeah. yes. And I'll second that. <laughs> did Larry make motion? Yeah, he made the motion. Right. <laughs> you know, I did. All in favor of the approving liquor license. Say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. That's quite a name. <coughs> okay, <coughs> set maximum <coughs> deposit limit for WCF Bank. Now, do you want to do that in conjunction with the Name if you it. want to. So I put that on there because uh, back, I think it was in March, the treasurer at the time asked you to add them as a depository for Tama County, mm -hmm. which normally every January, that's one of your resolutions. You list all the banks that we yep. have money in and the total amount that she can transfer in and out of there. And so when uh, Michelle asked you to add that, she didn't give us a limit. So we need to put a limit on that. Um, the other thing is also one of the banks that was approved was called Great Western Bank, and they've had a name change to First Interstate Bank. So um, I created a resolution for that where um, we list both of those banks and the amount. Um, First Interstate Bank I left at, or for the treasurer, at $2 million, which is what Great Western was. The WCF Financial Bank, um, she asked for that to be at $5 million. So then I uh, put it in a resolution for you. It's resolution 1031-2022A. It says, be it resolved that the Tama County Board of Supervisors hereby resolves to authorize the county treasurer to deposit county funds in the following banks and set the amounts as follows. WC Financial Bank, Tama, $5 million. First Interstate Bank, Gladbrook, $2 million. So I put that before you to Is there a motion to approve resolution 10 31 2022 A? I'll move to approve that. 
Okay, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call vote, Laura. Okay, Larry? Aye. Bill? Aye. Dan? Aye. There's no bank in any, any bank in our county has changed names more than that driver's name. Oh, really? Yeah. Do they change hands? Yeah, that often. That takes care of both of those yeah, items. Yeah, that takes care of both yeah. of those. We're going to have a be discussing with our attorney on the progress of the art of removal lawsuits and probably going to closed session. So, do you have anything, Kevin? Oh, closed session. Sitting right here. I'm in the hot seat. Hey, you forgot me. It wasn't on the. No, 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 no. I never forget you. Oh, okay. I never forget you. I was just. Just, just waiting.
training with all department heads on the ground. You have to do safety training for those folks too. Always. You have to do safety training. Oh, uh -uh, not yet. Um, no. I don't think. I don't think. Um, we. Uh, they. No. I don't know what they're gonna do. Well, they don't really have anybody that's gonna come out there. Yeah, we don't have anybody right now. I told him he's gonna need to do our do some kind of safety training with our departments for our secondary roads next month. Yeah, because we haven't had any training at all done. Because we were doing quarterly training and back in March. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to do some training with them here next month. Mm -hmm. Oh, my structural guy will be here tomorrow with you. The structural guy will be here. Yeah. So here, here's the thing.
skinner county was really good so we had uh they did two in the courthouse and of course they were spread out and the last one was at 2 30. so uh, it's like a day and i forgot to take the tape recorder over
And I walk up to the door. No, there's no cars in the parking lot. We don't have any. I walk up to the door. And the lights are on. And I'm like, you don't, you don't even have the door. The door is on. 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 The why are they doing that? So I around and I'm like, morning! And I'm like, 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 I'
everybody get around. You know, that's what yeah. And you know, Larry and Holly Bird still got away yeah. from all the shooting. Yeah. It was just. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know where she comes from. How does Spider Sense miss? She doesn't tell me. No one is right there. Yeah, she doesn't. I don't know. Quite comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Over a couple years ago. Yeah, before you start a combine. Oh, it's a